Uh, good evening, uh, everyone. My name is Luis Perez Peri. I'm chair of the Historic Districts uh, Commission in Concord. Welcome to the March 16, 2022 meeting of the Town of Concord Historic Districts Commission. The commission today will review two continuances and three new applications. And after considering the application, we will conduct some other business. We are conducting this meeting online in accordance with the Commonwealth of Massachusetts executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law. The public may access this call through both telephone and video conferencing. Members of the public will have an opportunity to ask questions and provide public comment on applications and discussions following the petitioner's presentation and questions from the commission. To do so, please raise your hand in the participant function of the Zoom meeting platform. If you are calling in and cannot use the platform, you may raise your hand by dialing star nine. Our host will mute microphones of those not speaking and in order to preserve bandwidth and may need to turn off video with the exception of the commissioners, the host and the current applicant. I will call on each commissioner for comments on an application and then open the meeting for public comment. Once there are no more public comments, I will ask for a motion from the commission to continue to approve, to approve with conditions or to reject a second and conduct a roll call vote. Once the commission has acted on an application, the applicant is free to leave the meeting. We will do a roll call of the members of the commission present, understanding that some of the members will be absent. Uh, Dennis Fiore. Here. Abigail Flanagan. Here. Catherine Mast. Present. Henry Moss. Present. And I, Luis Perceta, am present, and uh, all present members will be uh, voting members. So the uh, continued problem here is, is the Concord Colonial Inn and 48 Monument Square, which the applicant has requested a contingency without discussion to the May 19th meeting. Do we need a motion to approve that uh, continuance, uh, Heather? Yes. Okay. If I can have a motion to continue the application of uh, 48 Monument Square. Sure. Sorry, to which meeting, Luis? Uh, May 19th. Okay. I make a motion that we approve um, a continuance of the application for 48 Monument Square to the May 19th meeting. Second. I second the motion. Okay, can I, we can have a, a voice vote, I guess, all in favor. Aye. 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 So the motion is approved. Okay. The, <clears throat> the second continued public hearing is Kevin Hurley, 2325 Langit Street, Northbridge Monument to Square Historic District to demolish freestanding garage and carport, reconstruct front entrance, uh, new walkways, remove, relocate and replace windows, relocate and replace doors, chimney, add new bulkheads, reconstruct deck and stairs, remove, reconstruct and replace roof, construct new attached garage and room, construct additions, remove deck and stairs, and replace with a stone pa patio, patio re uh, relocate wires on the ground, replace gutters, install lighting and light posts. Uh, we had a site visit uh, last uh, uh, Wednesday, I believe. Um, and uh, I guess the, uh, is Mr. Hurley here? Yes, I'm here, can you hear me? Yes, yeah, here. Okay, if you want to, uh, to uh, present uh, the, the application, uh, you know, we, we, this will be the second time, but if you can make a summary of exactly what are the plans and uh, uh, how, what are gonna be the changes in the whole building. So um, the, the application basically is to do work at 23 and 25 um, Lying Street. 25 Lang Street um, is a church that was built in 1920. We're going to do minor modifications to the exterior of that building. At the back of the church building, there was an addition that was built in the 1950s. Um, we're going to do significant renovations to that building. 
And that building, uh, I have said in the application, in my opinion, uh, is not consistent with the goals of the historic districts. Uh, that portion of the building was built before the formation of the historic districts. It contains a low pitched roof at six and a half percent and has multiple plate glass windows. Uh, in our applications, we gave you photographs of that. On February the 9th, we submitted an amendment to our application that just principally specified the type, the two colors, the trim color of the building and the clapboard color of the building, exclusive of the masonry that will remain unpainted as masonry. And those colors are just the same colors as the existing building, but we gave you specific uh, Benjamin Moore colors. And then on the 9th uh, at the site meeting and subsequent to that, I filed in your office, revised uh, landscape plan and a revised architectural plan. The architectural plan showed the pitch of the existing building, which the commission had requested. In addition, the architectural plans proposed reducing the roof pitch from a 12 pitch to a 10 pitch. And once the roof that is done, the main ridge of the proposed building would be lowered by approximately 28 inches. So this shows the revised drawing and the front elevation uh, of the proposed work. Uh, we also changed the inside of the building because the staircase had to be relocated and the second floor at 23 became smaller because of the reduced pitch of the roof. In addition, at the previous hearing, uh, the commission asked for more landscaping to be shown uh, and we submitted a revised landscape plan which you're looking at right now. And that landscape shows just about 150% more landscaping than previous proposed. And as I pointed out at the site meeting, a lot of this material is very substantial in size. It ranges a lot of it from 10 to 14 feet in height. And I think that's a good summary. The architect, Benjamin Nickerson, is also on uh, if you have any questions of him. Uh, thank you very much. Then. Um... I will ask for comments from the commission. We'll start with Dennis. Um, <clears throat> I don't have a, a huge number of problems with this at all. I think it's, it's pretty straightforward and uh, it's a tough building to deal with in many ways. And I think what you're proposing uh, seems very appropriate. Uh, I like the idea of the la larger landscaping. You're like me, you can't wait forever for trees to grow. Um, <laughs> the question I had about, I, I, I hadn't recognized until tonight when Lewis mentioned that there are lamp posts. What, where are the lamp posts? There, um, again, I'm just asking, can you hear me? I yes. can hear you, yes. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. There's, there's three lamp posts. They're shown on, the, on this landscape plan. So when you go to the front walk of the church, on the left of the front walk, about halfway up, there's a little rectangle. And that's one of the lampposts. Okay. If you go to the right of the church, at the end of the proposed driveway, there's another lamppost, a, a small square at that location. And then if you go directly across to uh, the entry to 23 or the rear unit, to the right of the walkway there, there's a square that shows a lamppost. And we submitted the details of that lamppost, but it, I did the Trinitarian Church on Walden Street, and it's the same lamppost that we use there. I also built uh, and owned the house at 388 Lowell Road. We use the same lamppost there. The most significant thing, perhaps from your perspective, is that it is a traditional lantern, and above the luminaire, we put a solid piece of wood so that there's no upward distribution of light. So the distribution of light is all uh, down and the actual details of the post and the luminaire are attached to the initial application. So if you, uh, Heather, if you go up to the first line item 25, and go towards the end of the application, Further down, oh, actually it, it's attached maybe to the narrative. Dictator. See the narrative, yes. Try the end of the narrative. 
Then there's a thing there, Heather too, that says lighting. Sorry. That, that's the luminaire we used at the Trinitarian Church and that we're proposing here. And that's the same light post that we used at the Trinitarian Church. And like I said a second ago, we also used it at 388 Lowell Road. This is a post and lamp light that will be used out back adjacent to the patio to illuminate a grill area. And then this is a lantern that we would use on the right side of the church building and on the back of the uh, unit at the rear because there has to be a light under code at each one of those entrances. And we use this, not that it's in the historic districts, but when I renovated the Queen Anne building at uh, 1489 Main Street, we use this and interestingly enough, it's, all, it's called the concrete barn light, even though it was not manufactured in concrete. And that's the extent of the exterior lighting. And are these fix figures, what the fixtures, excuse me, you're showing now, uh, are those down lights so that, that the light doesn't uh, protrude out? Yes, they are. Okay. Thank you. Uh, let's go to Abigail. <clears throat> um, so I had additional questions. So can you point out the location of this patio post and light on the um, site map? So if we go to the back of the building, um, okay. this is the back, this is the patio and Heather has put the arrow on the post okay. and light off the patio. Okay, so that's not necessarily, is that visible for monument? Because it's not, I wouldn't say- it would Not with the landscaping that we show on the left. Okay. Um, if I, if I can interject, the, I, actually you can see it from the street, from along the street. Okay. Depending on the season, but it's part of the public. Okay, Can't yeah, I mean, I, I would say, you know, I'm, I'm always concerned with exterior lighting. That fixture and that configuration on the post doesn't seem to be in keeping with, um, other fixtures that we've approved. I don't think it would meet our appropriateness guidelines. It seems like an odd configuration to put what is essentially a down, a, a down light landscaping light up on a post. Um, I think if that's visible for monument, um, I would have concerns about that. Um, the lanterns, can you just explain to me again how because they, they don't appear to be dark sky compliant, but you're putting some sort of wood fixture in there that then makes them dark sky compliant? When you look at the base of the fixture, go up about 14 inches, and then yep. there's a rectangular section. Okay. And in that rectangular section, what we did at 388 Lowell Road is um, we put a piece of plywood painted black horizontally uh, or parallel to the ground in that location. So none of the light can get to the upper portion of that fixture. So right where Heather is putting the arrow is where we put in the painted piece of plywood so that no light can go up in direction. Okay, is the, seat, is the glass seated or is it clear? The glass is clear. Okay, and what is the what are the lumens and kelvins on this? Oh, the so lumens, these. We used to use a 75 watt light bulb. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you what that converts to today, but it would be no stronger than a 75 watt light bulb. Okay, we'd need to be specific in the approval about lumens and kelvins because this is something that we come across with exterior lighting all the time is kind of, we all have an understanding of what 40 watts, 60 watts, 75 watts, and the wattage is one concern, um, but the warmth, and the color of the light is really important um, in the more modern fixtures. Um, and we'd have to make it obviously conditional on that, that blocking piece of plywood being put into the light fixtures because these, as they're designed, they would cause a substantial amount of light spillage, which I would have um, concerns about. The wall mounted fixture, I believe to be just on, on looking at it, would be dark sky compliant, and I would have I would have less concerns um, about that. Um, ben, can, uh, go ahead. It, ben, can you tell us what the luminant lumens should be limited to in those? Post you know, off the top of my head, I can't remember the numbers. There, it's in our guidelines. We have we have specifics about what we cap things at. 
Um, and so. Then you put in any decision yeah, we would you make that it approval. should not exceed. Yeah, we would put in the approval anything specific to that. That would be um, fine with me. Yeah, um, but the the patio the patio post and light seems like a bit of an odd configuration, um, and I would say that just my my first instinct is that it's it's not something that we would typically approve. That, um, that light is about the size of a grapefruit, and as you can see, all the, it's it's solid on the top and all the sides, and it only distributes light downward. Um, yeah, it's 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 just it's a it's kind of a novel configuration. It's not something that we've approved in other locations, I don't believe. So, I kind of need to noodle that over a little bit. Um, all in all, I mean, I think I agree with Dennis. Is this is a kind of a the property itself? It's it's a bit of a strange configuration for us. Um, it's certainly outside of the norm of of the the typical structures that we. Um, are dealing with it within the district and particularly within this particular district. Um, I think a lot of the improvements um, are in keeping with our guidelines and it are what I would determine appropriate. Um, looking through the landscape plans, a lot of things are um, denoted by the height and not necessarily the caliper. And usually caliper is something that we look at. Um, I know you have a lot of arborvitae and that's easier to distinguish by height. Um, all in all, I'm I'm generally in favor. Um, there's a lot of detail to this plan. Um, I watched the last meeting via video. I wasn't able to attend, um, so I'm feeling a little bit on my heels about some of the details. Um, but that's kind of my initial impression: is that I I do want to be very specific about the lighting. Um, I think the landscape plan. Um, is generally in keeping with our guidelines, but I, I want to review a couple of, of those issues. Um, and then I did have a question about the the decking, the the railing that's denoted um, that we have photographs of. That's kind of a very modern um, post with a steel cable. The deck details. It's the second. Yeah, so this so is Heather, a, if you a go very to the, modern treatment. Um, Heather, where to where exactly picture. is that located? So, and go a little bit, uh, so the photograph fully, Heather, if you can. So the, if you, so what we do is we have a top rail, we have a bottom rail, and of course we obviously have post. The decking itself is mahogany. The rest of the wood is all painted the same trim color as the house. And one of the reasons we specified the cable is that, as you can see in this photograph, it almost disappears. And then we put significant landscaping between this deck and Lang Street itself. This is okay. not visible from Monument Street at all. Okay, where is that located on the map? Uh, uh, the site plan, the proposed deck there. Right there. Okay. Um, I have reservations about that. I think that's a, I think that's a very modern treatment. Um, and perhaps other commissioners can weigh in on what they, they think. Um, but I'm, I'm struggling with the cabling in terms of appropriateness in this location in the district, but I'm, I'm curious to see what other commissioners think. Um, so I'll, I'll pass it back to, to Luis. Okay, uh, let's ask uh, Henry. First, I was very impressed, I have to say, uh, with the quality of the presentation and the thoroughness of a presentation, uh, both as an application and on site. And I think uh, overall, it is a, a very well worked out and a very good scheme. Um, to the question about the exterior lighting, what the HDC guidelines do is to limit people to 40 watts, which is 430 lumens rather than 970 and 40 rather than 75. I'm not sure how significant all of that is back there in that sort of corner. 
um, behind behind the facade. Um, my reaction to the cable uh, is, is a, it's sort of in between in that when I first saw it, I thought to myself, I don't think I would have done that. And that is not why I'm here uh, to make comments like that. I th know that it, it's meant to look um, unobtrusive. And I think because of its location, that will be true. If that uh, proposed deck and uh, the cable balustrade on the stair were out closer to the street with no landscaping, I think it would attract more attention than, uh, than it would escape. Overall, I think that this is a good, good application and I'm supportive of it. Others may have more detailed things that they want to pursue. Thank you, Henry. Uh, Catherine? Um, yes, so both Henry and um, Abby have captured the essence of, of the couple of sort of critical points that I too had. Um, while I very much appreciate the fact that the rail system with the cable would um, in fact more or less almost disappear, um, I do feel that it's a significant stylistic departure from you know, the rest of this um, renovation and approach to this building. And I think you know, that's even very evident just looking at the drawings um, as a for example. So I'm a little bit on the fence. I, I understand the approach. I understand um, that it was intended to um, be something that ultimately would be very subtle because of, of the, the subtlety and the almost near transparency of the cable system. But um, again, as, as a sort of holistic stylistic element, um, it definitely feels like a big departure for me. Um, likewise, I also echo Abby's comments about the light on the post. I think that there are a lot of other approaches to the lighting there um, that would feel a little better integrated both stylistically and in terms of um, you know kind of just the lighting uh, the noise of that lighting so to speak in general um, for example you can have the you know on-demand um, lights that can be literally staked into the ground as needed um, so it'd be a more temporary approach um, but otherwise those those really are my my two major comments and um, otherwise I do feel like it's it's a very well developed and well executed um, plan I think the proposed changes and renovations overall look look very good yeah. uh, thank you Catherine uh, I probably will echo some of the same comments that have been made I think that the, the overall project is very good I think that it brings uh, the house to a more homogeneous uh, uh, presentation or or appearance, and removes all these type of hodgepodge things that were done through the years. And uh, again, I will uh, focus on the main issues that have been mentioned, which is the lights on the back, which I personally don't believe that they add anything to the design. I think that they they are. A sort of a imposed structures. I think they are busy and they, they lack uh, the essential functionality uh, that characterizes all the historic uh, sites in Concord. You see, from, from my perspective, if uh, a light is needed there, then would be a minimalist, a minimalist light uh, that uh, it's either flush with the floor or if it needs to be uh, on a, at a level, at a higher level, then it would be just like a, a very small structure that uh, points downwards. Uh, the lumens need to be very limited uh, as uh, the guidelines uh, refer to. So I, I don't think that the, the lights as presented uh, add to the historic references to the house. In terms of the, of the deck, uh, my take is uh, slightly different because you now I think that this deck is uh, it's very well designed. It's very transparent in the sense that uh, the, the things that make it very modern uh, disappear very quickly. 
and you, they are only notice when when you come very close to it. The, you know the the cables are reflective with the surrounding environment. So um, I I don't think that uh, from a visual standpoint there there will uh, be odd in terms of the uh, general context of the house. And on the other hand, I think that they make an important contribution of uh, stating that uh, it's an, an old house, but that uh, there are some, some things that uh, can be incorporated that are new and that in balance, uh, they remind us that uh, uh, history uh, goes forward and some things uh, are improved or changed and so forth. So I like uh, the idea of the deck and uh, I don't think that uh, the lights on the back are uh, that helpful. Uh, now, uh, any comments from the public? Okay, if there are no uh, uh, comments from the public, I'll ask the applicant, uh, would you consider a, a proposing a different design for the, for the lights and uh, um, and perhaps the, the commission may approve the application with uh, that exception and that can be considered at a later time? Would, would that be an option for you? Um, it, certainly with respect to the light in the back of the house, uh, which seemed to be the main concern, I'd like to put the post in and put power to the post and I'd re withdraw any light on that post. And if I was to add a light, I would bring that back to the commission at some later date. Um, but the only thing that we'd install is the post would bring power to the post, but there would be no light on that post. I think the post, the freestanding lights out front are consistent with the historic districts because we've used them at the Tricon Church and we've used them at places like 388 Lowell Road. And I'd like to continue to have those three posts and lanterns. I have no problem with having a condition that says they cannot exceed the maximum, which I think was said this evening is 400 lumens, and that we have to install uh, the plywood so there can be no upward distribution of light from those fixtures. Okay, so um, I think that we could bring uh, this application for a motion and uh, with the caveat that uh, that motion uh, could be uh, amended such that the lights are further discussed or the motion can be approved as presented uh, by the applicant. So if I could have a motion from the commission. <laughs> I cannot make the motion, no. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, uh, is it, is it, is Luis, I will try. You may have to correct me. Um, okay. I would move that the application for 2325 Lang Street and the North Bridge Monument Square Historic District be accepted uh, with the exception of a re with the condition that the lighting be reevaluated. Um, including uh, the post at the front yard. Um, do we have a second? <laughs> I second the motion. Okay, so I, I will restate the, the motion that the, uh, we're voting to approve um, the application for uh, changing all the uh, structures as submitted in the application, but uh, we are with, uh, withholding the approval of uh, the light fixtures on the front and the light fixtures that are on the back. But we're not making any exception to the deck, which was part of our discussion. Uh, are we all in agreement in that regard? 
Sorry. Okay. I, no, I think Heather has questions and I do. As okay. Would you like to continue the discussion on the lighting or is the approval excluding lighting and he needs to resubmit an application for lighting? Well, I think that we either can continue, which I think will be appropriate, or it could be a matter of a, of a new submission. But I, I believe that continuing is administratively a more easy. It's easier. Okay, so the, the, the motion should include that um, the condition is that the lighting is continued to um, a, a, a discussion on, um, let me see when the next meeting date is. Um, Next April, 7th. April 7th. May I ask okay. for clarification? No, go ahead. Um, I thought we were only discussing the light fixture in the back. I thought we had no problems with the lampposts in the front, but, but that's maybe I've heard that incorrectly. Well, that's what I understood too, Dennis. You know, they were, only, I, I, we're only talking about coming back with a, a fixture for the one in back, which he said he's going to put electricity in, but not a fixture. So I'm not sure if I see a problem if he's withdrawing the fixture from this application, unless we don't like I, the post. Dennis, I thought that the post and fixture at the front, he had, uh, Mr. Hurley had said that he wanted to install without the lamp. I think that's the fixture. No, no, no I'm sorry. That's the patio but, lid. I think the it's the one patio at the patio only. only. Yeah, it's, it's only just the patio. The, okay, let, it's let only me, the patio lamp. Yeah, let me take a. Do you want to bifurcate that entirely? You want to install the post, but not a light fixture, and you'll return for a separate application for an approval for a light fixture. Correct, because it, okay, it, let, it would most likely be months from now. Okay. When I let me let me take patio. a crack at the at a motion. Um, I make an, a motion that we approve the application for 23 and 25 Lang Street as submitted with the following exceptions. The rear light fixture located at the patio will not be installed. A post without light fixture and power will be installed. The light fixtures to be installed at the front of the property will be in compliance with the uh, stated HDC guidelines with administrative review pending the lumens and kelvins. That, that, that would be fine. About it? Okay. Can, okay. Uh, do we have a second then? I'll second it. Okay, then um, I'll go around uh, Henry for a vote. Aye. Uh, Catherine? Aye. Abigail? Aye. Dennis? Aye. And I'm an I as well. So. The application is approved with the conditions as described. Thank you all very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for your patience. <laughs> OK, the uh, next application, it's a, a new application, which is uh, Ayanna Curie in 47 Lowell Road to install uh, solar panels. Ms. Curie, good evening. Welcome. <laughs> Hi, thank you. If you want to present uh, your proposition. Okay, sure. Um, Ayana Curry, 47 Lowell Road. I'm asking the commission for approval to install the solar panels on the back side uh, roof of the house. Um, the diagram that you've uh, put up here, thanks Heather, um, just shows the, the diagram like drawings of where the solar panels would be placed. Um, again, this is just the back side of the house. Not um, they're not visible from the side, the sides or the front of the house. Um, I took some pictures. So this is my house from Kai's Road. So that's my house. So in the winter time, you can see it a little bit. Um, I, I actually tried to find the places where I could see my house the most clearly from the back. <laughs> so <laughs> that's my house from Kai's and I didn't zoom in in the photos. So you can see it sort of, so that's the, um, that um, driveway that goes to the Walgreens and you can see my house a little bit from that angle as well, so. 
that's the, those are the right of way photos. Hmm. Okay, and th this is then just, just for solar panels and the solar panel, panels are in the back of the house, not facing the road. Correct, okay. correct. Heather, do you think that we could put the Google Maps uh, picture of the house so the commissioners can see the context and the relation with the concrete market? Yeah, just give me a See, and uh, in the meantime, we can ask uh, the members of the commission for comments. Let's start with uh, uh, Henry again. I could almost see this from the back of, uh, of the Walgreens, not the back, the uh, entrance area behind Concord Market. I thought this was a perfectly acceptable location for uh, solar panels. Uh, thank you, Henry. Let's uh, ask Catherine. Um, I have no problem with this application at all. I think the location of the panels is uh, absolutely fine. Um, I think our applicant has shown us how hard it is, even in winter with all the trees um, losing their leaves, that it's very difficult to see really much at all. And certainly, um, as far as I can tell, no ability to see anything from the public way. So um, I am 100% fine with this uh, proposed application. Uh, Dennis? No Thank comment. You. I have no, no questions. Uh, I don't have any questions either. I think that it's a good location for the uh, location of the solar panels. Any public comments on this application? Sorry, Louise, can I just? Add I'm sorry, question? Catherine, uh, Abigail. I'm sorry. Um, no. So, uh, in our guidelines, we state very clearly that we are in favor of solar panels, renewable energy. That we want to work with homeowners in that regard. This is an ideal example where we've been able to meet um, the town's clean energy um, goals while preserving um, the historic view from the public way. So, I'd commend the homeowner. Um, I think this is a situation in which um, both of our, our mandate um, and the town goals can meet together nicely. Um, so I'd be happy to approve it. Well said. Thanks for your comments. <laughs> Thank you. Any, any public comments? Well, in the absence of uh, public comments, I ask for a motion from the commission. I make the motion that we approve the application for 47 Lowell Road as submitted. Seconds? I'll second it. Okay, uh, um, Henry? Uh, aye. Uh, Abby? Aye. Dennis? Aye. Catherine? Aye. And I'm an eye as well. So, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you very much, all. Okay, let's... The next uh, application, it's uh, Robert Peterson from 2224 Main Street to install a new rear entry door. <coughs> yes. W welcome, <laughs> Mr. Alcantara. <laughs> good, evening. Uh, good evening for everybody. Uh, <laughs> we're here back. So uh, as we did, uh, the, the bigger office on uh, facing Main Street, they had like a, when you were on the front, so they have uh, another small office. I think on the past time was number 26 from Main Street. And they are asking, uh, I mean, uh, the architect who rented that place, he wants to go with the back door under that little, po that little post, which are facing the back in parking lot. Uh, for two reasons. One is for like, because the parking lot is gonna make it easier for him to come inside. And uh, the not, another reason was uh, not recommended, but suggested by the fire department chief because uh, they only have like a front exit. And this uh, old 26 uh, uh, place, is like a very long, and then he says in case of fire, that's, it's, it's like a one big place inside, in case of fire and emergency would be like a easier to go out. 
but the main reason is like uh, to have another access uh, to the to the to that room uh, inside. The door will be matching uh, the side door. There's one door there already on the back, which is from that big that uh, bookstore. So the door that we are proposing to install will be matching the existing door. Uh, that storm door is not there anymore. So I just removed it because it was on a very bad condition. But behind that uh, storm door, they have uh, basically three quarters uh, glass panel door with the bottom uh, solid wood with some uh, molding around. And uh, we're just like a basically like a proposing to install a new door right where we have that uh, that post on uh, under the second level uh, egress entry. That's our uh, demand for the commission this evening. Uh, thanks very much, um, uh, Henry. Go around my screen. <laughs> Uh, I walked back there and had no problem with the idea of a new door in that location. I was, um, I commend to the attention of people who were concerned about the deck at uh, Lang Street that they look at this one. Uh, thank you, Henry. Abby? I have no objection. The The view from the public way is quite limited. Um, we're not dealing with a historic configuration um, in this particular location on the building. Um, I have no objection. Hey, Dennis. I have no problem with this. Hey, Catherine. I also have no objection at all. And I have no objection at all. So if I can hear any comments from the public, if there are any. In the absence of uh, comments from the public, I will ask from uh, for a motion from the commissioners. I move that we accept the approve the application for twenty two twenty four Main Street as submitted. Seconds. Second. Okay, going around, uh, Henry. Aye. Dennis. Aye. Abby. Uh, Catherine. Hi. <laughs> and I'm an I as well. <laughs> thank you for thank you very much for everyone from the from, from the commission. Have all of you a great night. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. You're very welcome. Bye. Okay. The next uh, application is going to be Edith Hill from 59 Walden Street, Main Street Historic District, to renovate existing buildings, including doors, windows siding, gutters, and lightning, and to construct a second story addition, new side entry porch, and utility fence enclosure. Uh, is the applicant here? Yes. Um, hello, welcome. Wow, it's very intimidating. <laughs> yeah, no, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> so. If, if you want to give us a, a presentation of uh, what are your plans and what are you planning to do? Yes, thank you. Uh, so Mike, why don't you share the screen? Uh, while Mike pulls up the uh, presentation, I'll introduce who's here. Um, um, I'm Andy Lovrud from Design Science Architect, along with Mike Liebeck. Um, and then also at the table are Chris and Edie Hill. They're the owners of the property and Deb Howe is the landscape architect on the project. Also, um, not in this room, but also on the, uh, the call is uh, Tom Falwell, he's the attorney. Uh, Rich Harrington's a civil engineer. And uh, Mark Lionetta may or may not be on. He's, he's gonna be the general contractor. He's from Agog Construction. And oh yeah, and I apologize, Frank Widmeyer's also on the call. He's one of the owners of the building. So um, I know you guys have received the application and um, we're happy to flip through that. We have that here as a thing we can scroll through, um, which we should probably do. And then we have some additional 
newer uh, 3D renderings that we've done that we'd like to show you so you can really see what the building is gonna look like. So if that sounds good, um, Mike, why don't you pull up the, is it up? Yep, we're gonna share. Okay, all right. All right, so, and please stop me if you want me to go over any of this, but I assume you guys have kind of gone through this. So why don't you scroll down, Mike? Uh, why don't you scroll down to the first, um, yeah, the site plan. Um, so this is the site. It's 59 Walden Street uh, across from the Trinitarian Congregational Church. It's also next to uh, 51 Walden, the Performing Arts Center. Um, the building, as you know, has been a bank um, since it was built back in the 50s. Uh, Deb, did you want to say anything about what's on this slide? The um, this slide is um, existing conditions of the site, and as you can see, it's mostly parking lot. There are two um, large trees, one in the front um, next to the entry drive, and, um, and then a large red maple in the back down by the brook. And those two trees, we're proposing to remove uh, the large one in the back, the red maple, because um, it, a third of it is decayed, and if we prune off the decayed part, then we unbalance the tree and make it unsafe uh, for anybody parking in the parking lot or, or on the stream side. Um, and then in the front, because we're going to be doing some uh, subgrade excavation between the uh, existing handicap ramp and the sidewalk, we're going to really be compromising the roots of that honey locust tree, and so we're proposing to remove that and then replace both those trees with other um, other trees of um, of species that are comfortable for that spot. And, and yeah, so sure. And then this is the uh, proposed site plan. Um, we are keeping from the street. We're keeping the handicap ramp and stairs as they are, cleaning them up. Um, we'll be replanting everything. Um, proposed to put a new red maple on the corner where the uh, current honey locust is, and then transplant some mature uh, shrubs to the east side of the building, and then plant on the west side, which is currently um, just a two foot strip between concrete sidewalk and building. We want to put some herbaceous perennials and grasses in there just to soften the edge of the building. In the back, we're hoping um, to do some planting in that back area. We're not changing the parking lot at all. Uh, so our next stop will be with the NRC to get um, to get the wetlands permissions. But so you can see um, there's not the most significant change to this is um, putting in plantings. In the back we have we currently have utilities, uh, gas meter and AC condensers and we're going to be putting a fence around that to match the fence to the east of the property. Um, so that uh, nobody driving in is looking at a bunch of um, utility units. We're going to cover that up and then plant uh, ground cover and another, a third columnar oak tree um, on the corner of that spot. And that's pretty much it. Okay. I, I will ask the applicants, as there are, there are many of you, if you can identify yourself uh, when you speak so we can uh, have a record of who presented. Uh, so that's as far as the landscape uh, plan and the site is concerned. Um, but you're also going to change a, a number of uh, uh, items in the structure itself. And I assume you, we have plans for that as well. Yes. So Mike, when you go to the next one. Um, once again, Andy Lovered from Design Science Architect. So this is the existing conditions uh, as you see it from Walden Street. Uh, the, the bank building. And um, I flip to the next one, Mike. And that's what it looks like in, in drawing form. And so this is the proposed building. And we're going to show you some renderings and some comparison things shortly too. But in general, what the project is, uh, we're going to remove the roof of the building and we are going to... Um, lower the height of the first floor, which is currently at, I think the ceiling's around 11 feet or so, and we're gonna bring that ceiling down to about eight feet. Um, this 
and then we're going to add the second floor and uh, basically keep the same footprint of the building, but sort of squeeze in a second floor. Uh, the overall height of the building decreases by four foot nine inches over what it is today. So just what? Yeah, when it, we're going to flip to it. So this is on the left is what it looks like today, um, height wise. And um, on the right is what it's going to look like. And on the left drawing, if you can see it, maybe zoom in a bit, Mike, uh, you can kind of see that the, the building grows in height by four foot nine inches. Oh. Yeah, and then architecturally, <laughs> certainly we're, we're, we're getting rid of the brick or covering it up depending on how we deal with it. But um, architecturally, we're looking at clapboard, cedar clapboard, most likely to be painted white uh, with uh, black windows, uh, keeping you know historic type detailing, uh, divided light windows, and we're going to show you some samples of that in a minute. Uh, go back to where you were. Um, scroll down now. Yeah, so that's what it looks like today, and. This is what it's, um, we've, we've updated these renderings a little bit uh, since the presentation. We'll show you the latest updates, but pretty much nothing has changed other than what we're, we're showing here. So that's pretty much what it's gonna look like sort of all four sides around. Let's get to the next. If I, if I may ask, to ask you to clarify just one thing, which is that that, that proposed height that uh, adds uh, a little less than five feet to the roof line, how does it compare to the other structures that are in the same street adjacent to this structure? Is it higher or lower or? Yeah, I'm glad you asked, Luis. Mike has some, uh, why don't you flip to some of those, Mike? Um, so here's an elevation from the street um, with 51 Walden on the left and 69 Walden on the right. Uh, that's what it looks like today. Let me flip to the, and that's what it looks like proposed. Flip back. Okay, Thank, thanks for the explanation. Yeah. yeah, so the building, as we said, grows about four foot nine in height, um, yet we're able to get in the, the floor space we need for the offices that we need to create. Um, yeah, here's a view from the back, kind of before and after. Yeah, and after. Uh, do you have any any drawings or any plans for the lightning? Uh, I'm sorry, Luis, any plans for the what? The, for about light, the, the, the oh, lighting, yes. the, the light fixtures and so forth. Yes. So right now, if you can see on this drawing, I don't know if you can zoom in at all, Mike. Yeah. Um, we have two wall packs up there, those little black dots, which will be actually white fixtures on there. And there will also be wall packs on the sides of the building to light up the driveways. Um, you know, there. we'll go back in a minute to the... Uh, the material sheet where we show you some samples. Um, we are considering some lighting for the back parking lot. Deb, you want to talk to that a little bit at this point? Yeah, um, we're we're looking at lighting for the back parking lot now. Um, given that this is no longer a bank, it's a it will be a real estate office, and um, and and real estate people don't take keep bankers hours. Um, but we're looking at fixtures. Uh, I'm researching fixtures right now. For uh, low pole lights, and I understand they've got to be sharp cutoffs and um, be low and dim enough um, if they're visible from the street. And I think in our next our next go round, I'll be able to bring in fixtures and let you know all about lumens and um, and where the light is cast and where the light is not cast. Okay. All right. Um, 
before we um, ask the commission for uh, comments, I would say that uh, uh, we will certainly have a site visit uh, for this application. So we should make our comments within that uh, perspective. And uh, I assume that that could be on April 17th. Heather, is that correct? April 7th. April 7th, sorry. Um, would that be possible for the applicant to have us do a site visit in the morning of our April 7th, which is the same day of our next uh, meeting of the HTC? Yes, that will be fine. Do you know what time? It will be at the eight in the morning. Eight o'clock in the morning? That is correct. Yikes, okay, I can do it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I, I will open uh, uh, the discussion for from the commissioners. Let's ask uh, Abigail. Uh, thank you, Luis. Um, I appreciate the thorough application. I think it provides us with a lot of um, good information. Um, after the site visit, I'm going to have lots of specific questions. Um, the wall packs in particular are probably a concern of mine. Um, questions about some of the landscaping. Um, my overall, my impression um, is that I think it is generally in keeping with our guidelines. I have some concerns about massing. I have some particular concerns about um, the weight of the massing on the, if you're looking at the structure on the right side of the structure, um, that dormer and that extension. Um, I understand the change in the overall height of the structure isn't significant. That piece of it feels um, feels like a significant change, um, particularly given the residential property to the other side. Um, there's a there's a, a good amount of green space to the left side of the structure and to the rear of the structure that provides a bit of a buffer um, for the increase in massing and the increase in size. Less so on that other side. Um, so I'm interested to see at the site visit on how that looks. Um, so yeah, so overall, those are my those are my first impressions. I'll have lots of specific questions um, at our next meeting, um, but I'm looking forward to the site visit. Thank you very much, Abby. Uh, Dennis. <clears throat> um, I'm going to hold back for the most part until the site visit. I don't see any major problems now. I, a um, couple of questions. Uh, you have some um, overhangs, some porch, little porch roofs here over the steps, and I'd like the uh, columns holding them up seem kind of flimsy. Um, and I know at this point they're not very detailed, but I'd like to know more about uh, architecturally how those are. The other thing I'm a little bit hung up on, but it's not a big deal, uh, and it's a, you're going to keep it as a holdover from the current building, is as you've gone out of your way to create a nice culinary revival look for this, but the front door is kind of a strangely modern look with um, an old glass door on one side and then a glass panel on the other side. I don't know if there's an easy resolution for that, but I'd rather see a, a centered door with lights on either side or a centered door without lights on either side so that it didn't look sort of um, ajar with the rest of uh, the building, which you've gone out of your way to make, uh, to, to make a, a very good uh, culinary revival try here. That's all I have to say at this point. Thank you very much, Dennis. Um, Catherine. Um, so yes, I agree with my fellow fellow commissioners. Um, I will add though that um, I actually think that the proposed changes um, will represent a significant positive change to the overall aesthetics of the street. I think the 1950s structure is not um, really doing us any favors aesthetically. <laughs> Currently, so I think the proposed changes are, are overall um, excellent and um, I think will have a real impact. I'm very glad to see the thoughtfulness and the thorough presentation of the landscaping in particular. Um, I think it's a little hard because obviously we're looking at renderings that sort of divide the landscape plan from the, um, the vision of the um, completed structure. Uh, so it's, you know, we have to kind of integrate the two in our minds. But um, again, I think um, Dennis made a good comment about the door. 
Um, I also agree with Abby that, um, you know, they're, they're going to be things that we need to look at more carefully. But again, overall, I, I really like the proposed um, plan as it, as it stands. And um, I think the, the impression of the, of the street, aesthetically speaking, is, is gonna be, um, you know, much, much nicer in the end. Thank you. Thanks very much, Catherine. Uh, Henry. I, um, I've been um, concerned for a long time about the poor design quality of the original bank. And <laughs> oddly, it has, a, it has a certain kind of relationship to the post office across the street, but mostly in terms of materials. I think that the, the general change and massing and probably even materials um, are an improvement along Walden Street. I think that um, with such a thoughtful landscape design approach, um, I, would, I would raise a, a fundamental question, which is, is there any way to consider changing the parking so you can get rid of one of the driveways? Uh, I think that would be a major contribution to Walden Street uh, if that could be done. And I understand that why it works the way it does with the layout as it is. Dennis's uh, point about the doors, I have to concur that that has bothered me every time I walk by the building as it is today. Uh, but I don't think that this is an unsolvable set of problems. I look forward to the site build, uh, visit and I think that this promises to be a, a contribution to Walden Street. Thank you very much, Henry. I have nothing to add to what uh, uh, all the other commissioners have said. I share the same concerns about the door. I uh, believe that uh, an important contribution of this site will be the, the landscape, the landscaping. So I would uh, look forward at seeing a very thoughtful uh, um, con uh, consideration of the, of the landscape. And um, uh, I think that the comments on the driveway are right on the spot. It would be absolutely great if we could get rid of that driveway. Um, thanks. Uh, any comments from the public, please? Hi, I'm Claire Gothier. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to speak because I don't currently live in Concord, but I used to be in the Concord Historical Commission. So let me know if I if I can't speak. Um, but I just came uh, on. I, I, I don't believe that there's any objection that you participate as a member of the public. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I used to live at 100 Estabrook, uh, and I just came on as a past Concord Historical Commission member as support for this. Um, in full disclosure, I am a real estate agent at their firm, um, but I, I do really think it's going to improve what is there, which is a big brick box. Uh, so that's my that's my contribution. Thank you very much. Any other comments? Mr. Van Sicklin has his hand raised. Uh, go ahead. Uh, yes. Um, yeah, this is John Van Sicklin. We happen to live at 69 Walden Street. So we're the uh, direct abutter to this property. And, you know, I agree that, you know, anything we can do with the bank is a good idea, um, especially, you know, to put it in more of a colonial setting. Um, the, the challenges that we have that I'd like the um, Historic Commission to consider, and you may see this when you get on your, your site visit, is that the, the massing of the building is substantial especially to that, you know, the side that, that abuts 69 Walden. The increase of the second floor, the roof line is actually decreasing. So the height increase is actually five feet, six inches, I believe. If you go back to uh, slide 11, you know, earlier. And those windows look down into our property down into our master bedroom, which is on that second floor to the uh, northeast side. 
The second thing is the lighting as proposed. My guess is that lighting is expected to be on 24 hours a day, the way the bank is today. And you know that, that lighting is very high on the proposed second story, which will also, you know, cause, you know, you know, lighting all night long the way the bank has been set up. <clears throat> so anything we can do to, to dim that would be appreciated. Um, and, you know, I guess the third thing also is, you'll notice there is no room between the driveway on that side of the building and our home. And so the comments around, you know, um, you know, eliminating a driveway on that side and, and planting to create a buffer between commercial and residential, um, you know, would also be, you know, consideration that I think would be, you know, uh, a, a, a nice option, you know, as well. So, you know, those are really the three items, the massing, especially on that side towards 69 Walden Street, the lighting uh, along that side, uh, and then potentially, you know, eliminating that driveway and creating a buffer between commercial and residential. Thank you. Hey, thanks very much, uh, John. Hmm. All right, are there any other public comments? Lola hey, has her Lola? hand raised. Yep. There you go, I'm unmuted. Um, Lola Chase on 77 Walden Street, two doors away. Um, and I wanted to, I agree with the comments about the lighting. I think that that could be a big problem for all the wildlife and everything in the stream in the back. I think that there's got to be a way that it's not on all night and that it's not up high. Um, eliminating that driveway would be wonderful. All the other special zoning areas or whatever they are in town do have a green buffer between them and the other properties that they abut. Um, this one building doesn't. So I think it would be, since they're doing a lot of work on the building, I think it would be lovely if they could get rid of the driveway that's between 59 and 69 and have some actual plantings there. Um, and one more thing is, I just wonder, have you considered for the handicapped access using, using the back door and having an elevator instead of having that big ramp in the front? Um, I know that when my father was in a wheelchair, I would never have gone to a bank like that where I had to park in the back and push the wheelchair uphill and everything else. That if I could have gone in the back door of that bank with a wheelchair and gone up in an elevator, that would have been wonderful. So I'm hoping that you at least consider that somewhere in your ideas. Thank you. Thanks very much, Ms. Gibson. Hi, um, Joanne Gibson, 88 Walden Street. And I agree with everybody's comments so far. I mean, I, I do think the building is so much better than the red brick building. Um, it would be great if you could move the, the um, well, the, the lighting is always a problem. I was on the Historic Districts Commission eons ago, and I know that lighting is always an issue, and, and it should be. Um, and the other thing is, um, I just think that handicapped uh, ramp and the front railings are particularly unattractive. And while you're doing so much to make the building look so much better, they either should be moved to the back, as Lola just suggested, or at least modified in such a way that they're not quite so out of tune with, I mean, they, they sort of fit with the red brick building, but they don't fit with this. So I, I would like that to be considered also. But in general, we, we've come a long way. We've had a lot of problems through the years on this building and um, they wanted to change the zoning, et cetera. So uh, we're, it's a relief in many ways and hopefully these other things can be taken care of. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other public comments? Okay, so I just want to summarize uh, prior to this visit, the, the issues that have been uh, brought up by both uh, members of the commission and members of the public. The first one is the parking and the driveway. And I refer to these issues as issues that the applicant 
may want to consider and may want to uh, modify in a in a new uh, in a modified application or change in a, in a new in a uh, evolution of the application. The second issue is massing and. Uh, Heather, if you could put the, the northeast elevation uh, of the uh, of the proposed plan, if you can put it in our in our screens, I think it's uh, yeah. So we'll stop sharing. The uh, one out of one, the projects fit. I don't know. The, the one that is in three dimensions, not the one that is flat. I think it's a uh, proposed rendering is 2422, two, two. that one, exactly. See, I, I um, uh, call your attention to the facade from the Northeast, which is a, a very large uh, wall with uh, two windows on the front. I think that that's one of the factors that contributes to the, um, effect of massing. And uh, I believe that the applicant could, would, could consider a sort of softening that facade by either adding windows or, or adding some structure that, that makes it a, a less a harsh of what it is because right now it's a, it's a very large surface. The third issue that uh, was brought up was the lighting. And I think that that's another thing that the applicant should pay a, a detailed attention. The issue of the green buffer, it's uh, also very important uh, because uh, this is actually a, a very a nice part of Concord and actually a very nice uh, street where to stroll. And uh, being greeted by a, a, a nice vegetation and uh, vast amounts of greenery, it's very good. And then uh, the other issue that was brought up was the issue of the handicap ramp which I bring it up because I believe that there are alternative options that uh, would be entirely ADA compliant and that would remove what uh, seems to be an imposed structure on the front of the building. So I, I think that those are the, the five things for the applicant to consider. And if there are no more comments, uh, then I would ask for a motion to continue this application to our, to our, our meeting of April 7th. I make a motion that we continue the application for 59 Malden Street to the April 7th meeting with a site visit to be held that morning at 8 a.m. Thank you, Abigail. Uh, seconds? I'll second it. Okay, Henry. Aye. Abby? Abby? Aye. Dennis? Aye. Catherine? And I am an I as well. So we look forward to seeing you on uh, the 7th of April and thank you very much for this uh, very good presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your time. We appreciate it. Okay, so we now will conduct some other business. Uh, Heather, there's a, a certificate amendment for 66 Monument Street. Yes, Betsy Rusa is here. Yep. Hello. Um, who who is here? Betsy. Oh, Rosa. Betsy. Oh, hi. hi. How are you? Hi. <laughs> Please go ahead. Welcome. Um, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so um, we uh, came a long time ago. Um, the project moved a little slowly because of windows and supply chain things. Uh, but um, we uh, have moved over to this porch. And in the original application, we had asked for a new door and a new light fixture, both of which you approved. And um, then um, in look, you know, we hadn't spent a lot of time looking at this porch. And um, when uh, the contractor really started looking at it, he realized it's in pretty bad shape. So we're talking about basically replacing um, the entire porch and, um, we replace it in kind. So this is a list just from top to bottom of what we would like to do. So roof and roofing, replace in kind, same sizes, same profiles. The columns um, replace in kind. 
Um, this is what started the issue of rebuilding it is they're rotted down on the bottom. So we would just like to rebuild them so they're not rotted anymore. And uh, same detailing, same cap. It's, it's not the most elegant detailing, but we're happy to follow it. And um, the sconce is, uh, that was an approved sconce. We had... You approved a sconce before, but the homeowner has found out it doesn't exist anymore. That's the existing one, which um, she didn't like. That's the one she wanted to get. They don't make it anymore. So she would like to buy this one. Um, seated glass on that. And um, the handrail, then if we keep moving down, oh, the door we um, will replace. You had approved that. So we'll replace that. The railing with the um, profile balusters, replace those exactly as is. And um, it's the concrete um, is sort of the big one. Um, we would like to take that concrete completely out and do um, granite steps like you see here. That's unfortunately the, not the best photo. The one at the top that um, we just saw is the front door that between the front porch and the little side porch that have been in since before this homeowner. And then the next photo that um, Heather was just on is the um, new, stairs at the rear of the house, but we do that kind of thing, a block granite. Um, the same size, um, same height as the existing. We do want to um, get rid of one of the risers. So we would have the landing and um, and those the tiny little stairs that are there are really a trip hazard. I've, you know, we almost always fall off of them. They're the very small tread. And um, so we'd like to have just one step below. If you can see when you step off the landing, that's seven inches, the next step down is six inches and the bottom one is four inches. So we would get rid of the four, make two seven inches and grade up so that it all was felt nicer and um, take the stairs the same width as the landing, take it all the way across. And that's what we're asking for. Thanks very much, uh, uh, Betsy. Yeah. Oh, and, and Louise, sorry, this is uh, just, there's that side porch right there. And just, you know, it's up so high, it's hard to see the granite, but um, it would look the same as the others. Thank you, sorry. Okay, I have a technical question, uh, Heather. Would this be considered a, a, like a new application or can it be managed as a, an amendment to the original approval? It can be an amendment to the original approval. Okay, because what, what I can see is that uh, everything is a replacement, replacement in kind except uh, the issue with the, the stairs and so forth. So I hope that we can uh, do it administratively. So if I uh, can hear any comments, uh, Dennis? Um, I have no comments, looks fine to me. Abigail? No issue. So I think the amendment would just be a replacement of the previously approved light fixture and a change to the stairs. That seems pretty, pretty simple. That's it, yeah. Thank you, Abby. Uh, Henry? Uh, I support this. And uh, Catherine? Yes, I'm in favor of all the proposed changes. Okay, and I'm also in favor of all the changes. So uh, I would ask for public comments. And if there are no public comments, and then I will ask for a motion from the commission. And make it a motion that we amend the certificate of appropriateness for 66 Monument Street to include um, a new light fixture um, uh, to replace one previously approved but no longer available um, and a change to the stairs from concrete to granite. Second. I'll second it. Okay, uh, Catherine. Aye. Uh, Henry. Aye. Dennis. Aye. Abby. Aye. And I'm an I as well. So great. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. You guys are very efficient tonight. I thought this could have been a long evening, so thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sorry, I know you still have stuff to do, but anyway, thanks. We, we can make it longer if you wish. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> thanks, have a good evening. Good evening to you, thanks. Okay, so um, the next uh, issue would be a discussion of 20, 29 Main Street. 
the best of British. Uh, Heather can uh, enlighten us on this matter. So we received a phone call questioning um, the statue in front of Best of British and wondering if the HDC has approved it. Um, I'm not sure how we want to handle this um, as street furniture or a statue or either or needing an application, um, but I wanted to run it by the commission. Okay. Um, maybe uh, Abby can uh, be the... <laughs> So I think this is tricky because the guy there. Yeah, the guy. So, so I would have said so prior to this week, it had been left out 24 hours a day. And I would then consider it to be like a permanent fixture. Mm -hmm. In the last few days, they've been bringing it in at night, um, which would make it similar to the what I what I like to refer to as the painted lady at the Concord Light Shop. <laughs> The red woman of the night who's outside. Um, <laughs> also, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so I mean, I think it's in a bit of a gray area. It's not technically signage. It might be considered street furniture. Um, I, I, I don't think. I think it probably. Ugh, it, it's something that we need to address because this is the type of creep of scope that we see when it's not considered a sign that people start leaving things out. We've seen it at other locations in town. When does it become kind of a, a more permanent fixture? I think if they plan on displaying this every day, even just outdoors in business hours, um, it's substantial enough in size and visibility um, that I think it should fall under our purview. I'd have to take a second look at the guidelines to see under what kind of kind of category we'd put it under. Um, but uh, it's, I mean, it's certainly quite quite visible, and it is for the most part until the last few days has been a twenty four hour fixture. Thank you, Abby. Hey, Catherine. Um, I think Abby brings up some good points. I mean, I I think my greatest concern is more of sort of a a setting of precedent concern, um, because I think in and of itself, um, you know, I think it's kind of honestly fun and delightful. And I think as long as it's kept out only during business hours during the day, and it's understood that it is a non-permanent fixture, then in my opinion, I think it's fine. Um, but I, I do understand the, the sort of greater view and context of of kind of setting a precedent for allowing this sort of thing um so it, it's it's tricky and um you know again i i have i have no problem uh with it in and of itself in terms of um, a non-permanent fixture that gets brought in and out during during working hours but um i think we do have to have an eye towards um you know what is sort of the messaging around this, I guess, going forward with similar things. Thank you, Catherine. Uh, Dennis. Yeah, I agree with Catherine. If it, if, and I could see Abby going back and forth. I think if it's in and out every day, I don't have a problem with it because my, my mind is now going through all the, pan, the Pandora's box we would open up. The book cart in front of the Concord bookshop, the lady that, that Abby mentioned, the leg, uh, one of the antique shops has a sign pointing up to the shop up above. Um, and, and, you, and the antiques that are in front of one of the antique shops on Walden Street, which are put out every day and then brought in uh, in good weather. So boy, there's a lot of this in Concord. And just, once we start with one, we got to attack all the rest. So I'm, I, I would leave it alone for now myself. Thank you, Dennis Henry. I very much agree with Dennis, and I th think that the critical issue is that it not remain on the street permanently and overnight, that, that sort of thing. The Pandora's box comment is right on the money. Yeah, I, I mean, I think we could send just a simple notification that, a clarification that any, it's the same thing with the racks of clothes at the grasshopper or anything like that. Any non-permanent fixture needs to be, is permissible during business hours and needs to be, you know, removed from the streetscape in the evening or 
you know, because it's it's within, it's not blocking the sidewalk, it's not creating a, a hazard, it's not create, it's not impeding accessibility or anything like that, but just confirm to them that, you know, it needs to be, it needs to be, if their operating hours are 10 to 6, then it's permissible to be displayed during those hours. And outside of those hours, it needs to be removed from the streetscape. I'd agree. Thank you, Abby. I, I think that the, the issue is whether this is a work of art, a piece of furniture, or a sign. <laughs> and uh, it's one of those three. And uh, I think I agree that, that we should not try to open the Pandora's box. So if we can uh, send a letter uh, to um, Best of British, restating that the, the, the piece has to go in when the door, when the store is closed, I think that that, that would clarify issues and we don't have to get into the other issues that were mentioned. I will draft the letter. Thank you very much. Uh, what about minutes? Uh, has anybody re re uh, reviewed minutes? Uh, we all trust Abby. <laughs> I will admit that I did not review the minutes that were posted today. This has been a bit of a day in this house. So I have what was what was amended and posted today, I have not reviewed, but I will trust if other people have thoroughly reviewed, I can take a cursory look after. I, I did review them. I thought um, I didn't see anything that stood out. I they seemed very thorough and accurate as far as I could tell. I would agree. I didn't see anything that stuck out. <laughs> I, I also wasn't present at the February 17th meeting, so I'd be relying on the on the recollection of others. I reviewed them and I thought that they were very thorough and I couldn't find anything that I disagreed with from my memory. I read it very uh, quickly and I didn't see anything. So I wouldn't have any objection of uh, approving them personally. So may I have a motion to approve the meetings from uh, February 3rd, February 17th, February 17th uh, site visit and March 9th site visit. I move to approve all the minutes you just mentioned and site visit. Second? I'm not gonna remember all those dates. A second <laughs> motion. <laughs> okay, I'll uh, hear a voice vote, voice vote to approve the minutes as described. Aye. 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 All right, so we're going to the last two issues that uh, we'll try to make as briefly as possible. Uh, we have been um, in uh, conversations with uh, the Historic Commission with uh, Sally Saffield um, looking for greater cooperation between the Historic Districts Commission and the Historic Commission. Uh, Dennis Fiore has been extremely helpful in this um, uh, pursuit, and uh, he has uh, um, composed uh, a, a memorandum of understanding, and this is something that I wanted to discuss with all members of the Commission and uh, present uh, what is what we're trying to accomplish and then have as much feed feedback as possible. Uh, what we're trying to do is to have the Historic Commission as a resource for the Historic Districts Commission. Uh, all the decisions that we make are based on historic references. So we say this is not historical enough or this is going to change the historic character of the site, et cetera, et cetera. You see, we have had recent applications where that was part of the forefront of the discussion. So what uh, uh, we were envisioning in this setting was to have the historic commission be a resource that we can uh, uh, tap uh, in terms of uh, making them making a statement about the historicity or the historical relevance of a particular place. And the reason that we thought that the historic commission is the, the right uh, com commission to do it because that's exactly their, their mandate, that's their purview, to deal with the historic references of Concord. So uh, when we are in a controversial site, let's say 615 Low Road, or when we uh, are making changes uh, of one kind or another in the general fabric, then it would be nice to have as part of our arguments, a statement that the historic commission may have made, which may be in favor or against uh, what we're considering, but it would not be part of uh, 
the, consider the considerations for the HCC. It would be just a, a piece of information that we can use, but but albeit a very a powerful piece of information that comes from a very qualified body. So if I can hear any comments. <laughs> I, I just, um, Luis, I guess I just want to understand what, how would this be structured? I mean, in terms of this, um, you know, increased um, connection and rapport between the two bodies. I mean, how, how is that going to effectively be structured, I guess, is my question. Um, you know, what, what form will that take? Well, uh, that is uh, what, uh, what Dennis has been working on. So he, he, we wrote basically a memorandum of understanding by which basically what we say is that we're going to use the historic commission as a, a source of information. So our decisions are informed by the perspectives of the historic commission. Uh, the way to implement it practically, uh, it's, uh, there are many, many ways that that it can be done. One of them is that we can invite a member of the Historic Commission to be a permanent observer in the Historic Districts Commission. And uh, when there's a, uh, an application that we believe that has uh, important historic references that we would like to have input from the Historic Commission, we could uh, give them a, a warning ahead of time and ask them that they uh, listen to the, to the proceedings so they can get an impression of what are the issues that are being discussed. Um, this is something that uh, I, I had made very minor modifications to, to Dennis' letter because Dennis' letter is actually quite good and I will share them with you uh, as soon as I have, uh, we have a, a final uh, version that Dennis and I agree. Uh, so you can make amendments and corrections or changes. But uh, basically, it's saying that uh, we recognize the Historic Commission as a source of information and that we want to use them as much as possible and that, that they uh, also have that responsibility to help the Historic Districts Commission to make decisions that sometimes uh, may or may not be controversial. Okay. I would, I would just need to see what the language looks like just because I'm not sure how like schedule wise it's going to work for historical commission to review a project um, and vote on it prior to a next, you know, your next HDC meeting. Um, so I would need to see like language and how it's drafted um, because that could create some major scheduling issues with continuances. And, and that's exactly the reason that uh, what, what uh, Heather is saying is, it's the most important thing because one of the, the, the issues is how to implement this because we, I don't believe that we should have a, a formal bureaucratic process by which the historic commission now uh, has to uh, sort of uh, uh, amend or amend <laughs> any decisions that are made by historic districts commission. So I, th I see it. As a, as a consultative body, but, but a, a consultation that it's, that it's formal and that uh, therefore it's, it's relevant. So it's not like I, I ask a, a member of the Historic Commission uh, on Main Street as I found them as I was walking my dog and what they thought about this. You see, it's that we have a document where the Historic Commission expresses their perspectives on, on a particular project. But uh, that uh, uh, affirmation, it's not binding in any way. You see, it's just a piece of information that the Historic District Commission may take into consideration or may not, you see, but, uh, but at least it's part of uh, the references that are available. Therefore, our decisions have, a little, uh, have even more legitimacy once they are supported by that perspective. Sorry, Luis, I'm going to very, um... I have throwing up children, apparently. Oh, no. I'm, I'm going to absent myself uh, from the yeah, rest of the conference. To go. <laughs> and I've, I've been called into duty, so uh, I will apologize. Thanks, Abby. Abby. Excuse me. Good luck. Good yeah. luck. Um, Good luck to you. So, um, Heather, just just to clarify from for just a point of clarification that I'm, I'm looking for. Um, so I would assume as well that any sort of input 
you know, added um, consulting or collaboration from um, the Historic Commission would be um, still within the, the format of, you know, open public meeting, meaning um, there wouldn't be an implementation of, for example, like a monthly or an additional meeting um, but between our groups. Is that, is that correct? I mean, wouldn't that be not? Um... I think the, the concept here um, is that it's, there would simply be a resource we could call on. Mm -hmm. And uh, I and they've shown an interest in us by commenting on some of the uh, some of the things we've been dealing with, such as the Lowell Road proposition. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so I, I think the idea what Luis is trying to 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 say um, or trying to get to is the fact that we use them informally, but it would be nice to have something in writing that sort of lets people know that we are have we do have this relationship, we are connecting. We are working together. I think the community would like that to know that the various commissions are working, uh, are working together. And if any way we can be supportive of what they're doing, I think in terms of, uh, uh, of the, um, the Scenic Roads bylaw, uh, I think working together is a good idea. And I think it, putting it in writing, I think Luis Val putting it in writing lets the public know that we are working together and we do have a relationship. But I think there's no formality. You're absolutely right. Yeah. There's nothing formal at all. Yeah. No, and I, I think it's, I mean, in essence, I think it's a great idea. And I, I, I fully, um, you know, have, have a solid vision for how that, that could work and how that collaboration could be, you know, very positive and very effective. I just was trying to get a little bit more clarity around sort of, you know, again, yeah. how that would be implemented. Informal. Well, th th thanks to, uh, to Dennis for uh, clarifying things. <laughs> um, so uh, the the next uh, steps is that uh, Dennis and I are going to finish uh, this letter of understanding. We're going to send it to Sally Saffield. And then uh, eventually, uh, once we all agree on the language, and uh, by that I say all us members of the HTC, and I assume that uh, the members of the Historic Commission agree on the, on the letter of understanding, then uh, we can bring it uh, to one of, our, of our, our other business meetings and then take it to a vote and um, uh, proceed as such. I think then, the next step, I think the HTC should see the document um, in the commission have a discussion about it but prior to it being sent to the historical commission. Yeah, it, it's a, it's a, it's a document that it's, it's evolving, so it, it, it it's yeah, I just don't want to get too ahead of ourselves and send exactly. it to the historical commission yeah, uh, when absolutely. HTC hasn't seen it or no, discussed I, it. I, I think that's an excellent um, yeah, point. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Heather's making, yeah. Um, all right. The other issue is uh, a, another discussion that uh, we have started, and this is very preliminary. There have not been any discussions yet or, or any agreements. But uh, I just wanted to, uh, to make you aware that uh, uh, with uh, Henry Moss, which has been kind enough to offer his uh, wisdom and uh, expertise in this matter, we are going to have a very informal discussion with the chair of the planning board about uh, uh, implementing an architectural review board in Concord. This is a much more ambitious problem, a project, but this is something that uh, it's very important for, for the future of the town. Uh, because, you know, they, uh, if, you, if any of you went to the planning board presentation about two weeks ago, there's a, there are major plans for the Thoreau uh, uh, home, the depot district, etc. And uh, it, many times we uh, have been dealing with projects that, uh, by their uh, size or their design or the institution that's promoting them are, are significant. So we would like to have, again, additional references that say whether the project is uh, appropriate from different standpoints. That's the same way that we go to the Historic Commission to say whether this project is appropriate from a historical standpoint, then we could have an architectural review board in, in the town of Concord that could pronounce itself to, to saying that uh, uh, this project is appropriate or not appropriate, etc. 
this would not be just for the historic district. This would be for uh, <coughs> all a resource for all the town of Concord and, and not just for the historic districts. And it would be non-binding. Non, non it, it would be just uh, a, a commission made of our architects, uh, landscape architects, uh, planners, uh, designers, uh, historians that uh, can um, analyze a, a, pro a project and then say whether uh, from an architectural standpoint, it, it contributes uh, in which ways to, to the historic fabric of Concord. And again, this is very, very preliminary. Uh, we haven't had any, any conversations yet, and this may evolve as we go. But I think that this is a, a, an important concept to entertain. Uh, I will tell you that there are some towns, and I appreciate uh, Heather for uh, having pointed me in that uh, direction. For example, the town of Wellesley has an architectural review board, and it's very interesting because the architectural review board reviews every single project that it's carried out in the town of Wellesley. In other words, you cannot build anything without the architectural review board approving it. And it's different from the historic districts of uh, Wellesley. Um, so I, I don't see anything like that. That I, I don't see a, a, a body that has to approve anything, but I see a consultative body that uh, can provide what are the right ideas. You see, every time that I hear some of the architects in our commission uh, making comments about a project, you see, I'm, I'm, I always learn something and I'm always enlightened. So it's the same concept. But, uh, but made available to all uh, the people of Concord. So uh, any of you that has any suggestions or any ideas in that regard or opinions, but by all means, uh, communicate them to Henry or, or myself. And um, we will go from there and I will report to you after we have uh, spoken with, uh, uh, with the chair of the, of the planning board, Heather, <laughs> sorry. I, I just have one comment because um, I, was staffed to the DRB in Wellesley for the few years that I worked there. Um, it is a significant amount of work. Um, so I think part of the larger discussion you need to have is staffing and who's going to be your um, staff for this board. I think the planning division as is has a full plate and I don't think um, anyone could take on the additional work and night meetings of um, another board, such as a design review board that has um, so many projects that they review. Um, the DRB in Wellesley also reviewed every single sign that went up in Wellesley. Um, so that's something else that DRBs sometimes review. Um, so I think that's just something that needs to be part of the larger discussion is, is staffing and um, if someone else needs to be hired, um, how that's going to be paid for. Um, so just something to keep in mind. That, that um, I, I'm, so, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I just, again, sort of similar question to before, just um, literally from sort of a logistics and structural approach to, to the implement, implementation of something like this. I mean, how would that affect then the approval process? I mean, how would that be layered into, for example, our process and what would the order of events be? Meaning would every application um, from this point forward, if that if that review board were put in place, go first to the architectural review board for preliminary approvals and then to us. I mean, I guess my only concern is, um, you know, does that become sort of this long drawn out additional kind of red tape almost kind of hurdle um, to approvals for for, um, you know, applicants? Um, or is it again just more of a uh, supportive entity? So I, I again, I'm just you know I, I'm sorry I'm probably doing too deep a dive here in terms of thinking it through. Um, but but that that is my that's the question that comes to my mind. You know, just sort of functionally, how would that that work? Well, but that that I appreciate both of you and Heather for having brought this up because you know what we are envisioning is exactly the opposite. See, we don't want to have yet another committee that has to go through a process of approval that has to be staffed and that has to uh, be 
uh, supported uh, by uh, a bureaucracy and that uh, is now another cog in the wheel of uh, having anything approved in Concord. What we're uh, uh, envisioning is a, uh, a body that is consultative and that is composed by people that have enough a reputation and respect within the community such that their opinions uh, are heeded. Um, it's not anything that it's uh, compulsory and it's not obligatory for the Historic Districts Commission to consult them in, in every um, project. But, uh, you know, let's let's say that, uh, you know, the Concord Academy says that they're going to build uh, a 10-story building in Main Street, you see, then and, and they consult the best architect in the world <laughs> to do it, et cetera, et cetera. Then, you know, an architectural review board could be consulted and we could hear from that architectural review board uh, uh, what they think about it. They would say, you know, this is a great idea because, and then they can tell us from their perspective because it's a great idea or this is a very bad idea and then we can learn from their perspective exactly. So it would be, again, another source of references for us to make decisions and for the whole town to make decisions for that matter. See, so I don't see it as, a, as, any, as anything bureaucratic, just the so, opposite. So Luis, would then it be sort of essentially then a kind of, a, for lack of a better way to say it, a sort of on-demand um, resource for us, you know, as needed or wanted um, per project so that again, it's, it's not necessarily, um, a new layer or level of, of uh, process, but it's it's just up to us to determine if a certain project may be, for example, contentious enough um, to your point, or uh, you know, difficult from a, <laughs> maybe from a political perspective that that we feel we need the that additional resource um, and support of of um, you know some. Some architectural experts. Well, that that is exactly the issue. See, we we don't want to. Uh, uh, see, we, we, you know, we have three new applications today. You see, they they none of them have to be reviewed by any architectural review board. You know, mm -hmm. right. See, right. but but if if we're if if they tell us that uh, they are going to reconstruct uh, the the colonial inn and put an entirely different building then we would like to have an architectural review board review it. So it would be up to us. But knowing that we have that resource, then it would be also up to us to say why we did not consult them, you know, <laughs> if the project was of such significance. I, I want to ask uh, Henry for his thoughts, you see, because he, he has a very uh, clear perspective of, of all these matters. The first thing I would say is that my perspective on this topic is not clear. I think that the, <laughs> the points that uh, Heather Gill raises and that Kate raised are really significant. My experiences in this country is really limited to the Boston Civic Design Commission. And although I presented to them, I don't really know the mechanics of their relationships with the Boston Planning and Development Association authority what what i would be very will be very interested to learn here is what holes might exist currently amongst planning zoning and the history broadband frozen think we lost henry So, so I guess just um, it sounds like just my my takeaway then is in summation that this is a proposed resource for us, a supportive resource um, for you know added perspective and perspective um, on, on on projects. That that's exactly what it is. You see, it, yeah. it's a resource okay. for for us to make better decisions. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think we've done a great job, Luis. What are you talking about? <laughs> we've made good think, decisions. I, no, I think, no, in I think fact, that... no, it was interesting because I was walking around Concord with a friend the other day, Concord Center, and 
you know, we walked by the library and then we walked by a lot of other projects. Um, and my friend, you know, with, without having any, any thought or perspective of a fact, the fact that I'm on the commission, saying, oh, you know, this looks really good, or they've done a really good job with this. <laughs> and I was, I was just sort of quiet, but I was happy to hear that. <laughs> oh, I, I, you know, I think that the, the important thing here is that, uh, you see, we make decisions and, you know, some of our decisions make it to the papers, you see. Yeah, oh, yeah. So if, if that's the case, then, uh, you know, I want to tell whoever wants to hear it or has to listen to it, that uh, you know, when we made this decision, we informed ourselves very thoroughly, and that we consulted uh, such and such bodies that are uh, bodies that are available to the people of Concord, and we wanted to hear their opinion and what they had to say, and that's the reason uh, and we took those opinions into account. That's the way that we to look at it. Okay, I think that uh, it's uh, an advanced time. It's almost nine o'clock. Um, thanks very much, everybody. Thank you, Heather. Good um, meeting. We just um, need a motion to adjourn. We need a motion to adjourn. Well, I don't think we have any quorum anymore. <laughs> That's okay. I make a motion to adjourn <laughs> the Historic <laughs> District Commission meeting of uh, March 16th. All in favor? Aye. Aye perfect. Aye. Okay.